Thank you very much, everybody. Um, <clears throat> I'll give Narcissa a break. She's working very hard getting up and down. But my name's Andrew Dick, and I'm from uh, <clears throat> a rather ugly picture, sorry about that, was uh, essentially from Bristol, uh, now working both as well in London. But uh, it really is an honor to be here today. And I wanted to, before we crack on, just give you how this can work. From a common disease, diabetes, and it's amazing how the interaction between the clinician, the researcher, and the patients require, is required. So as you know, diabetes is caused generally in children due to a lack of a substance called insulin. And with that, children previously died very early on their onset of diabetes. And then clever scientists discovered this was due to a lack of insulin, and they managed to isolate insulin from pigs and started treating patients. And that was good, but then there was a real problem. They stopped listening to the patients. And what happened was doctors thought, oh, this is, this is very clever. Now you have to give insulin regularly throughout the day to stop you having problems with your blood sugars. And that's awful, led by doctors who were well, who didn't have diabetes. And they said, what you need is a long-acting insulin. You give it once a day, and that will cure all your problems. Didn't talk to the patients, didn't ask them. So they got the chemist to devise a new insulin which lasted all day, and it generated catastrophe. The complication rates of diabetes went up, the social embarrassment of having diabetes went up because the long-acting insulin meant they had attacks of low sugars called hypoglycemia, which meant that they would faint, they would have funny attacks in the middle of meetings or in social occasions, and they, it was all about not listening to the patients. So then they engaged in patients again, and societies led by patients were built up. So there's many diabetes societies, a common disease, and it was all built up, and they said, listen to us, this is our needs. We need to know how and why we get diabetes. We need to know what the course of our diabetes is gonna be like, and we need to have a treatment that stops us being embarrassed every time we walk out of our front door. And only because of that, which has taken, unfortunately, I hope we can do this a lot quicker, took 30, 40 years, they've now reinvented the wheel, and now most care of diabetes is regular insulin taken. So you take it regularly throughout the day, and you, you obliterate all these uh, embarrassing attacks, and you reduce the complication rate. And who led that wasn't the doctors, it wasn't the scientists, it was the patients, and it was by listening to the patients that the ability to care for diabetes has moved on leaps and bounds. So when it comes to uveitis, we're entering the first session which I'm chairing, which is to talk about the science, the diagnosis and the monitoring and the uh, medication options. Now I'm going to be naughty and say this currently has been led completely by the medical profession. So what you're gonna hear is, is gonna be appropriate, it's gonna tell us what we are or where we are, and it will help you and be informed, I hope. But hopefully what it will do is give you the knowledge to then tell us what actually we should be doing in the future. And from then we can have a base where we can all move forward collectively and answer some of the questions and respond in the broadest sense to all your needs. So we're lucky to enable to do that in having three speakers. The first is Graham Wallace, who I'll invite up. Graham's um, a senior scientist in Birmingham University. He's had a long history in immunology, that's the study of the immune system and how and why that attacks body uh, organs and causes problems. And has been highly integrated into the ophthalmic field for many years, studying why we get um, eye disease due to inflammation. So, uh, Graham, welcome uh, to introduce us to the science of birdshot. The one thing I'd like to say is when, when doctors and scientists get talking, they tend not to stop. So, um, when everyone thought we were on time, we're unlikely to be at the end. But uh, we'll try and keep to time, and uh, I hope, Graham, you'll obey. Thank you. Thank you.